As soon as Howen pulled out her phone to check, she just froze with a strangely startled expression on her face. It was smugly remarked by Shernua, certain that the place was so shabby that even her love-struck friend was shocked. But she was wrong. The place they were invited to was called Ling Wai, and there was a restaurant with the same name. It was located in the Jingwu building. This restaurant was known for being a super famous and popular restaurant with three Michelin stars. Even the most modest dinner in such a place cost over three, zero, zero, zero per person. But even that wasn't the main problem. It was the fact that it was very difficult to get a reservation because of the popularity of the place. Chin Qingqing found it hard to imagine that a cheapskate like Hung could invite them there. Could it be that he had secretly got a promotion and that was why he quit his previous job? Chernoa assumed it was just some cheap restaurant in the same building. Some people like to post locations near famous places to show off and confuse others. Howen didn't believe her jealous friend and advised her not to be so quick to judge. As far as she knows, Heng is not that kind of vain person. But Chernoa was still sure that Heng would soon embarrass himself and Howen would change her wrong opinion of him. Finally, they got into the car and agreed to go and see. Through the night city with no traffic, they drove quite fast. Jiang Qingqing had to admit that Hao Wen's new car was stable and had strong shock resistance, what her old car could not boast of at all. Xinhua was more restrained in her reaction. She even advised her friend to take advantage of her opportunities. She is a beauty blogger, and there are many rich people on her live streams from whom she could get some resources. All she needs to do is lower her collar a little and use soft voice. Then the gifts will fall on her. No matter its dance or beauty, all she has to do is lower her standards a little, and the rich fans will send rockets of gifts. Then Jiang Qingqing won't have to worry about getting advertising contracts. However, Jiang Qingqing herself did not like such offers at all. Besides, most of her viewers were girls. Xinhua was not going to insist. If it suits her and she can earn money without resorting to such methods, then let it stay that way. It's not like anyone wants to resort to such a thing for nothing. Xinhua also wished that some rich guy would actually want to marry her, and then she would be ready to become a full-time housewife with no regrets. The only thing that was bothering her now was that Hao Wen was silent. Was she really looking down on all of them? But as soon as she thought about it, Hao Wen spoke up. She thought a little differently. If a couple is together only because of momentary attraction, and the girl is not financially independent, then she will be in a vulnerable position in the family, and will have no right to speak. And then the way the rich guy lives with her will be the same way he might live with someone else. So as long as a man has money, he will always have young girls around him that he can change at will. This was not a situation Heian wanted to be in. To Sinuo, her words did not sound very honest. She wished Heian would stop pretending to be all high and mighty. After all, she actually dances more provocatively than anyone else on her live streams. In reality, Heian just wanted to be self-reliant and earn as much as she could while she still could. A man might betray her, but money never. Finally, they arrived at the parking lot beneath the restaurant, and Heian stepped forward confidently. But Zhang Qingqing hurriedly stopped her, eager to double-check the location of the place Hong had invited them to once again. Even with Howen's high monthly income, she probably wouldn't want to spend a lot of money here. What if Hang just gave her the wrong address? Shernua agreed with her completely. It was embarrassing for her to walk into a high-end restaurant and then shamefully leave because they didn't have a reservation there. What if one of their viewers recognized them and posted a video of it online and then they would lose followers? So Howen decided to call Hang to find out for sure. But all she got was a dial tone and Hang didn't answer. Shernua smugly mentally laughed at her, certain that it was solely Howen's fault that she was hanging out with show-offs and getting dragged into this. Howen, on the other hand, thought Hang was just busy and therefore not responding. Shernua put on her good friend mask again and suggested that something might have happened. In any case, Heng wouldn't mess with her on purpose, right? So it's still worth going upstairs and checking since they're here. Senua was just curious to see this top one restaurant and how the story with Heng would end up. Hawen invited her friends to take the elevator, thinking that Lingwei is a very expensive restaurant. Even though she can afford it, Heng with his small salary probably can't. There's a reason he's usually so stingy. Lingwei would be too much of a waste for him. What if he was just kidding? In that case, she would have to pay for the entire dinner herself. Approaching the entrance, Hawen hesitantly looked around from around the corner. When she didn't see him in the main hall, she started to panic. Why wasn't Hang answering the phone? She tried again and again, but nothing changed. Suddenly, a waitress approached them from behind and asked if they had a reservation. Heian wasn't sure what to answer, but Shinua answered instead, 
confidently saying yes. Now Heian had no choice but to say that the reservation should be under the name Hang Xinguang. Xinhua continued to gloat, knowing that the salary of an operator in his company was only 5,000. One dinner at this restaurant could cost him three months' salary, and she just couldn't wait to see how Heian would bear the blow of the harsh reality. But suddenly, against all her expectations, the waitress invited them to follow her, because Mr. Hang had been waiting for them for a long time. Shernua was simply speechless. Is this really real? As the waitress led them to the private room where Hang was waiting for them, Shernua couldn't stop envying how lucky Howen was. The company gives her resources, and she firmly occupied the position of top one, leaving everyone far behind. Shernua herself had to settle for second position. But as if that wasn't enough, there are all kinds of suckers trying to gain Howen's attention. Even a stingy loser like Xinguang was ready to spend so much for her. Xinhua was sure that in the end he would end up with no money and no girl, but she wished she could be in Howen's shoes. But then Xinhua would definitely not give even a chance to someone who pretended to be rich. The waitress led them to the elevator and sent them to the highest floor. Now Zhang Qingqing was really starting to worry that someone else with the same name as Hang might be waiting for them there. It was even hard for her to imagine how embarrassing it would be if they misunderstood everything. As far as she knows, this elevator here is strictly for the VIP clients, to make it convenient for them to get to the top floor with private rooms. It's just that the price of booking such a room goes up to 10,000 per person for the evening. Now, Xinhua was sure that someone else with the same name was waiting for them there. In her opinion, this was too much for Xinhua. He would have to spend his entire three-month salary, and that's if he didn't eat or drink anything. Even if it was actually him, she was curious to see how he would handle himself when he saw that the three of them had come. One thing she had to admit though, this Xinguang is really smart since he picked the moment when someone with the same name reserved a seat in the restaurant and invited them here just to show off. But this whole show would soon be over, and she would bring him out. Finally, they arrived at the 40th floor, where a nice waitress who looked much better than the three of them, invited them to come through and be seated. The only thing that bothered Howen was that Xinguang was not to be seen here, but Ching Ching wasn't upset about it and immediately started taking pictures in such a luxurious restaurant. It was not allowed to take pictures in the lobby, but it was still possible to take pictures in the private rooms. Ching Ching decided that whether they dined here tonight or not, if she managed to take good pictures, it would be considered a good night as if she had dined here. Xinhua did not share her enthusiasm and was in no hurry to join her. Ching Ching was going to publish these photos later, after all, no one would know under what circumstances she had gotten here anyway. Xinhua continued to be not satisfied. She still thought that Xinguang was just a rascal who invited guests and didn't come himself, just like she expected. Qingqing was having a more pleasant time, recognizing that she had never dined at such an expensive restaurant in her life, and realizing that she might not get another chance, used it to the fullest to take more photos. Xinhua finally ran out of patience and demanded Hao Wen to tell her what Xinguang had said to her. She didn't want her friend to make a fool of herself if it turned out to be a misunderstanding. Howen was also beginning to doubt that an ordinary office worker could afford to dine at such a place. She was about to leave when a waitress came to one door and started to wake Mr. Hong, who was sleeping there. Xinhua gloated that she knew it, and now Howen would be humiliated. But Xinguang dashed all her hopes. He had just waited so long for them that he fell asleep. And when he woke up, he saw four or five missed calls. And now he hoped they hadn't at least waited too long for him. He immediately told the waitress to start serving. To the girls, his change in appearance from a poor guy in a hoodie to a rich guy in designer clothes was startling. Especially for Howen, who didn't even know what to say. Ching Ching immediately estimated that his branded clothes cost quite a lot. The jacket alone cost over five and a half thousand dollars. Xinhua was just flaming with envy and couldn't understand how this guy could be so rich in reality. Had he inherited money from a rich relative? It made her angry that such a loser was so lucky. And it made her even angrier that he was so skillful at hiding it all. Xinguang greeted Howen first and only then her friends. Qingqing he recognized immediately. But Xinhua didn't. And she had to introduce herself. Of course she tried to use all her charms. But our hero was not impressed at all. He remembered her video with beauty filters and was surprised that in reality she was so different. Xinhua tried to justify that it was because of her light makeup today. But inside she was just furious at her defeat. Of course no one saw this, and Howen nonchalantly explained that she took her co-workers with her after work, but if he minded, they could leave. Just at that moment, a bunch of waiters came in with lots of dishes. Of course the most expensive ones in the restaurant, which quite surprised Howen. Looking at the expensive wine, 
She realized that at this rate, even she wouldn't be able to afford to pay for such a dinner. She still couldn't understand what Xing Wang was doing, and why she was wasting money like this. Ching Ching honestly shared that she envied him, because he must have inherited some family business, and therefore could afford to quit his job and have such a fancy dinner. But Howen wasn't sure and couldn't confirm her friend's guess. Looking at the feast in front of him, Hang Xing Wang was deeply disappointed. He did not have an appetite for this yuppie food. It looked nice, but it was too uppity for him. Excited, Zhang Qingqing asked for permission to take the first photo of the feast. Xing Wang graciously let her do her thing. Being a content creator herself, Qingqing was quite a good photographer, and the pics were fire. Feeling sketched out by the situation, Xia Nua asked Howen what was really going on and why this guy had so much cash. Well, Howen and Jing Wang were never really close. Apart from work-related stuff, they had never interacted. He was responsible for a few effective marketing campaigns, though. She even recalled seeing him live modestly. But maybe he was just a low-profile, pragmatic, and rich second-generation son of some conglomerate. He probably did not want a girl to pay for the meal, so he decided to reveal his real wealth. Still unsatisfied with the delectable food on the table, Xing Guang called the waitress to request something more down-to-earth and filling. Ching Ching enthusiastically backed him up, agreeing that expensive meals aren't even filling. They just look good for photos if you're a socialite. The waitress suggested slow-cooked black truffle beef ribs, pineapple monkfish liver, and many more exotic cuisines with names that were far too complicated. Just hearing these names was killing his appetite. He just wanted something cooked in intense heat. Some imported crab, imported beef, and lamb cut into chunks should do. The girls had never seen someone act in order like this in a high-end restaurant. Annoyed, Jinwo interjected that they should not have come to a French restaurant if he wanted comfort food. She was starting to think that he did not come from a rich family, but had recently acquired wealth as a nouveau riche instead. Xing Guang continued adding to his order, tacking on grilled kidneys and barbecue skewers like he was in a street stall. The waitress had to hurriedly apologize as she insisted that they only serve the restaurant's set menu items. That's when Xing Guang requested the manager, as this was above the waitress's pay grade. In her experience working in this respected establishment, she had never seen someone so brazen. A few moments later, a pudgy man wearing glasses came in and introduced himself as the manager of the place. Just like the waitress, he apologized as they wanted to uphold their name as a French restaurant. Seeing the young man get denied made Exine Wu very happy, even calling Xing Wang a bumpkin in her head. He noticed her little smirk and took note of it. Still, he really wanted to have a barbecue in a French restaurant. So he offered 300,000 for the meal and promised an extra 50,000 as a tip if his requests were met. Hearing the massive figure he had just dropped, the manager had to make a judgment call. Even the girls were slack-jawed after hearing such a ridiculous offer. They watched as the dignified manager turned into an obedient puppy while asking the VIP for any more requests. Seeing the manager cave to his demands, Xing Wang promised to gift him some kidney sashimi to commemorate his lost defiance. Looking dependable as hell, the manager promised to instruct the kitchen right away. The system saw him act thick-skinned, disregarding dining etiquette and making the restaurant change its rules, and it granted him 500,000 as a reward. This system was really proving itself handy when it came to saving internal conflicts. He told the girls that dining should be about relaxation and getting full, so they should do it right. Xing Xing joyfully agreed. She was looking forward to uploading pics of street food served in a high-end restaurant, expecting more clout. After a few minutes, the servers entered the private dining room and slowly carted in the orders. Although it was supposed to be normal street food, the restaurant managed to make it look delectable. Seeing this impressive spread of meals, Ching Ching became certain that money talks no matter what the situation was. She was just itching to let everyone know that she had barbecue skewers at a three-star Michelin French restaurant on the top floor of the tallest building in Beijing. Finally, the VIP and the ladies could start their dinner. By the time they were done, sticks were neatly stacked on the table, and the skewered meats had nearly been devoured fully. Xing Wang gracefully wiped his mouth and excused himself, saying he needed to go to the restroom. As soon as he got up from the table, the ladies started speculating about how wealthy he really was. His outfit alone must have cost at least 22000 Xing Xing proposed the idea that he just worked at the production company because he wanted to get close to Howen, but she thought he was just trying to be low-key and work a normal job, and now that he's out, he doesn't care anymore. Normal people could not help but be envious that some rich second-generation heirs get to experience life however they want. 
Morbidly curious, Shernua asked Howen if she was moved by the spending and if she liked Xingguang. If you asked Qingqing, she would definitely say yes. Being lavishly treated and spent on just for dinner would make her heart flutter. Shernua reckoned that Howen must have already known about Xingguang and was keeping him to herself, that she wasn't interested in her top donor because she had her sights on a bigger fish all along. But she swore that she had no idea. They were not even close when they worked together. They never had any private interactions, and she had no idea that he was this loaded before tonight. All she knew was that Xingguang had a great work ethic. He was ambitious and hardworking, often doing overtime. Xinhua accepted that Hao Wen really had no idea. She also raised the possibility that all these flexes were fake. Many people pretend to be wealthy to impress girls. Some livestream top donors do the same. These people would even go as far as going into debt to spoil their girls. If that were really the case, Ching Ching would have liked to commend Xing Wang for his acting skills. This witch, Xian Wuo, was suddenly struck with the idea of verifying whether the boy was really wealthy or just faking it. Howen quickly shot down the intrusive idea. That boy treated them to an interesting and expensive dinner. The least they could do was to stop doubting whether he was a fraud. Xian Wuo explained that Howen was underestimating her value to a man. A normal person could gain a lot by being connected to a popular streamer these days. That's how manipulative people operate. They charm you in, make you feel special, and once you're emotionally invested, they show their true colors, and it would be too late to get out at that point. Hawen had no intention of pursuing anything romantic with a work friend just because she was taken out for dinner though. Xinhua finally put her foot down and told the other ladies to just follow her lead as they verified his status. The party of four wrapped up dinner and headed for the parking area. If Xingguang was really faking his wealth, then Hawen would gladly cover all expenses tonight. She didn't want a hard-working man to go down such a deceptive path. She genuinely believed that there was nothing wrong with an honest and simple life. Qingqing broke the silence by asking Xingguang if he had a girlfriend. He honestly confessed that he had been single since birth, eternally alone in the romance department. She was surprised by that answer. She must have been expecting him to answer like a player. But Xingguang was so focused on his career that he hardly had time to think about dating. Being a corporate slave was demanding enough, but at least he got paid. If you add being a lovesick fool to that, it would be too much trouble. Just thinking about taking care of another person while he could barely take care of himself was horrifying. Since it was only five minutes past nine, Sin Wu proposed that they continue the evening at a bar. She even offered to treat them to a few drinks. She was a regular at Fugue Bar, a bar full of internet celebrities where they could network. Not seeing any harm in it, Xin Wang agreed. And so, they drove to their next destination. Xin Guang looked at Hao Wen by his side and could not help but think. Now that he had some capital to invest, maybe he could open his own media company in the future. His background in running operations might help in that field. Plus, he could get acquainted with internet celebrities. In doing so, he could be the next titan of the industry with all kinds of assets in his hands. Upon arriving at the bar, Xinhua gave them a heads up that she could only afford about two drinks for each person. That was not a problem for the party at all. This night was just about going out and having fun. In the parking lot, all kinds of luxury vehicles were lined up. Their drivers were naturally wealthy. Meanwhile, Xingguang was just excited to enter the famous fugue bar he had heard so much about. As soon as they got inside, they were greeted by the blaring music performed by a live DJ, hyping up the crowd. In booths and on the dance floor, there was all kinds of touching that was not very YouTube-friendly. The party of four settled in one of the empty booths to have their drinks. Xinhua ordered a margarita and urged everyone to get whatever they wanted. Qingqing got the pink lady, and Hao Wen ordered a non-alcoholic lime mojito as she still had to drive afterward. Xinhua quietly observed what Xingguang would order. She was starting to see the look of someone who had never been to a bar. When she snapped him out of his daze for the order, Xingguang just waved his hand and told her that anything would be fine. Since that was the case, Xinhua got him a Long Island iced tea. A strong drink perfect for making someone spill the truth while drunk. This which was really locked in to prove that someone was broke. The music was loud and the people were lit, drunk, and having fun on the floor. While enjoying their respective drinks, Xinhua brought up a special bartender named Danny who made amazing but pricey drinks. Howen knew that this was another one of her schemes to get Xinguang's wallet out. She wanted to make him face reality if he really was faking this display of wealth. While she was scheming, he was casing the club for influencers who might become potential business partners to make more cash in the future. Xinhua did not like being ignored. When he finally looked her way, 
Shinwa proposed that they play dice to stomp the boredom down. He seemed receptive to the idea and asked how the game worked. Shinwa didn't just want to play a normal game of dice. She wanted something more exciting. If you lose, you take off a piece of clothing. But you can bail yourself out of stripping with 10,000 instead. Shinwa smirked at the audacity of this woman. He stood before the witch and reminded her that he used to be the company's operations manager. And he knew all about her info and skills. He knew this girl was a dice expert. Ordinary people could not beat her. Realizing that her plan to humiliate and extort money had backfired before it even started, Xinhua was stun-locked. Huang started going off. He knew what this girl was thinking. A mere operations guy earning 5000 a month with no bright future ahead was pretending to be rich. He already knew that she was toxic trash from the start, but he wanted to let things slide to keep his night with Howen fun. But it led to him being seen as an easy target. He wasn't stupid or a pushover. He could see through Xinhua's disdain completely. So, the system rewarded him for standing up for himself and exposing another person's scheme. It netted him a cool million, pushing his current balance to 1.89 mil Xingguang did not deny that he did not come from a rich family. Shernua immediately took this as a confession to support her case that he was just pretending. He was not done speaking though. Suddenly, the laid-back Xingguang was gone as he flaunted his power. Instead of playing dice, he would gladly give her 300,000 to strip all her clothes and walk out of the bar naked. Feeling uncomfortable, Shernua played the damsel in distress role perfectly. Howen had to step in and defuse the situation, urging him to sit down and play with her for a while instead. Seeing him back up, Shernua started back up again, telling him that he did not have 300,000 yuan to throw around carelessly. He just replied by addressing the whole bar and treating everyone to 300,000 yuan worth of drinks. That's the literal definition of FU money. His golden card shimmered with the bar lights. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it then do likes for part 2. Also like and subscribe for more. And stay tuned for next part.